Hey, hey you! Yes, you! Do you like streaming? Would you like to stream on two different platforms but don't know how? Well then, listen up, because I have several ways for you to accomplish just that without paying some jack-off on the internet for this somewhat simple feature. And all I ask is that if ever you get asked how you did it, just direct them to this video. And maybe if you feel a bit more generous, then maybe a simple thank you and subscribing on the channel as well would be a nice thing. And maybe, maybe, just maybe, if you feel even more generous, take a look at my Patreon. In any case, all the useful things will be in the description. So then, today's topic, the multi-platform streaming, a term that I use to describe, well, you attempting to stream on multiple platforms, be that Mixer, Hitbox, or your own server, or even lesser known things like, you know, that Twitch and YouTube thing. Oh, but don't confuse it with multi-streaming, a term that people use to describe when multiple people stream together from their respective channels and their respective perspectives. And that was the sentence today. Yep. Okay, Emix, I want to do it, but how? Well then, um, there are four different methods I've used in the past, and I'll go through them as fast as I can, but if that's not fast enough, then there will be timestamps down below. For ease of use, I'll be using OBS as streaming program of choice, but, well, uh, you can use whatever you want. Even NVIDIA's GeForce streaming thing, if you're lacking some brain cells. And no, I'm totally not judging you. Totally not! Anyways then, let's begin with the restreaming websites that are popping up right now. They offer a simple and easy way to send your stream to multiple platforms. These types of services I've never liked, as you are trusting a company to handle your channel, stream key and data. Yes, yes, the big appeal is that you can easily just set it up without extra installations and all you need is just one OBS or other broadcasting software program instance running at a time. The issue with restreaming websites just don't end with a personal opinion though. There are legal or contractual issues that could be had depending on where you're intending to use it, so you really need to look up the contracts and rules before you're using them even. Now, due to Yamix not being a legal person, I would not give any advice beyond just research and inform yourself or ask the legal reps about this. But there are some select companies that really, really, really don't like you using those restreaming websites. Still, if all that's okay, the big issue with restreaming websites can be with the massive delays you may have, plus the streaming bitrate restrictions that could be imposed upon you. And if you want to get uh, that proper quality or get rid of that, in many cases artificially created delay, <laughs> you will have to pay up. So then, is it worth it? Well, I don't think so. And being a DIY person that I am, I took up the mantle of finding a better way, more importantly, something I could do myself. Now then, the first and the most obvious approach would be to have just two or more program instances, however many platforms you want to stream on, be launched and then coded at the same time, just changing up the server location and stream keys. So let's just call this the stupid method. Yes, you are transmitting to all the streaming sites you wanted. Still, for each stream site, YouTube, Twitch, Hitbox, whatnot else, you will need to create your own separate profile, separate scenes, separate whatnot else. Else. And when switching scenes, well, you will have to do it manually, as the devices like Stream Deck, yeah, this little guy, only controls the first streaming instance of a software, and not the rest. So this is an absolute nightmare if you want to do just more than stream this one scene, this one look, plus any changes you make in one of them will have to be copied manually to the other ones if you want them to match. Oh, and of course each instance is being encoded on its own too, so you better make sure that you're running something like this. Um, yeah. It's not cheap. So obviously it is the stupid idea. Please don't do it. Just think of the poor CPU. I know Ryzen Turgen is great, but those poor souls have heart too, you know? You monster. And this is where my hunt for a proper solution began. And not long after I found the NDI. Basically this is a plugin for OBS. And yeah, sure, I know there's a standalone software too, but it came later and I didn't want to learn more pointless stuff for what I wanted to do in the first place. But regardless, it works the same, be it a plugin or a standalone. So then, what do you need? 
well, a PC, or if you want a separate stream PC, then two PCs, OBS and the NDI plugin for it, link will be in the description. First, I'll explain how to do it from one PC, but as long as it is in the same local network and everything is open and all that stuff, you should be able to do it through the LAN. But anyways, I do intend to make a dual streaming PC setup video later, so check the description for a link once that's out. So then, you install the NDI runtime, OBS, and the plugin. Good. What you now will need is one main OBS instance, let's call it the transmitter, and then for every platform or server you want to stream to, you'll need to create that many OBS instances, and let's call them receivers. In my case, I wanted to stream to YouTube, my main platform of choice, and additionally to Twitch. Because, you know, why not? Some people like that more than YouTube and the other way around. That would mean that I need one transmitter and two receiver instances, totaling three. And yes, yes, I know it's pretty stupid already, but at least it works and it's way easier to manage. Just give me a moment. Okay, then for the transmitter, you'll have to just basically start the OBS instance and enable the NDI capture from the tool selection. Give this transmission a name and you're done. This is what the plugin will capture. So here, place all the overlays and things that you want to be copied or well, simply sent to transmitters for encoding. Also, before starting to stream, make sure that the first instance you launch will have have all these scenes and all these settings, if you're using something like Stream Deck to control the OBS itself. Then moving on to the receivers, here all you need is a blank scene. Add an NDI source and make sure it can see the transmitter's sent images. Since this is done on the same PC, there should not be problems. Boom, you're done! Save this as a scene collection and then just make different profiles depending on where you want to stream it with different stream keys and servers. Mind you, you will be streaming from the receiver OBS instances. So this means for each platform you'll be encoding separately. And that means you'll be putting a lot of toll on your CPU and bandwidth as well. Just like the stupid method. Now I live in Latvia and I got speeds like Boom! Bridge the Latvian fucking internet! And all I pay is 13 fucking euros! Ha <laughs> ha! So I have no worries, but you may have issues. Also, take note, and this is very important. NDI uses GPU to transmit those images. Yes, you heard me right. If you are playing a game that is GPU intensive, or you're basically just pumping out as many frames as possible, you may start seeing frame loss or lags. But as long as there is GPU power to spare, you should be fine. It's not ideal, I know, but it is what it is. So what I recommend is using some sort of frame limiters, or vSync for streaming to reduce the load on GPU and yes this especially goes with old games as they are just trying to pump out as many frames as possible and while you may not feel any impact the OBS is getting GPU leftovers and is starving causing frame drops so again use some kind of limiter the benefits of this obviously is that you can control all the scene switches and other things due to there being only just one transmitter. Plus you can set delays and other things like different frame rates, bit rates and whatnot else on receivers. Also if you use Streamlabs or other stream aids, uh, you can play effects and other things and not worry about them being played multiple times because again, there's just one transmitter, unlike with the previous version. Plus, if you want, you can just put on some additional things on receivers to cater to the individual platforms if need be. Though, again, this requires some GPU power, and even though I have my RTX 2080 Ti, I noticed that not a single game I managed to play, well, of recent times, I was able to max it really out without enabling some sort of frame limiter before I started dropping frames on the stream. Oh, and if you're using two PC setup, you have to make sure that you have a gigabit LAN connection as NDI really needs that bandwidth to transmit those raw frames. So overall, this is a really decent thing to have, but hands down, not even close to the best one. A method that I was looking into for a long time, a thing that as a matter of fact, all streaming platforms are based on, the RTMP server. When you open up YouTube or Twitch or other platform information and their designated server IPs or addresses, you'll notice some explicitly saying RTMP da -da 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 something. The acronym stands for Real Time Messaging Protocol, and these servers essentially handle ongoing streams of data, to put it simply. Now, all you need to know is just how to make it work, right? Okay, well, let's just do it. 
For this again, you can use two PCs or a PC and a server, which is a computer anyhow, but whatever. Today we are working with one PC and it will work anyways. Then all you'll need is just one instance of OBS and an RTMP server. For this we'll use Nginx, links for that will be in the description. So I'll take it that you have OBS already set up all the scenes and all the stuff that you want to stream on, uh, let's say Twitch or YouTube and Mixer, whatnot else. And all you need to change is just one thing. But before we can do actually that, you need Nginx. Basically, what we're about to make is a restreaming service. Yes, the same thing, give or take, that the people running those restreaming websites are offering. Yes, you'll be making pretty much the same thing, but with no limitations, other than your own hardware, and no money required. Lest you want to be a bit generous and donate to those developers who made these tools. So I say, screw those shady restream websites, let's make our own restreaming blackjack and hookers! Also, now with the personal RTMP server you won't have that stupid massive delay anymore either! Oh, and uh, just to be on the safe side, I would recommend installing all the Visual C++ redistributables. <laughs> it sucks, but it sometimes can make things just weirdly not work or work slowly, so... Just better to be safe than sorry. So then, first off, download the server. Extract it in a folder of your choosing. Open Nginx folder and head to conf folder. Simply just copy and paste nginx-win file. Then rename it simply to nginx.conf. Open that file and you'll need to write in a few things at the very end. Now, for each platform you want a copy of the stream to be sent, you'll need to put in an extra line like this, where you place both the streaming server and the subsequent key in. That's it. I shit you not, that's it. Now then, of course, make sure that the Nginx actually works, so launch it and if you see any errors, like, well, let's say if you put in a wrong address, you could see something like this. Though it will probably just only flash for a moment, so yeah. So simply open up the task manager and make sure it runs. Now, of course, you can turn this server on every time you start to stream, or you can just auto start it with Windows or Linux, as a matter of fact. Yes, Nginx is a web server, so it works on, well, anything really. But for Windows, just put the shortcut in the startup folder and boom, you're done. Now then back to OBS. Here, just open up settings and put in a custom server. Here, just write in either the IP address or server or well, in this case, the local host. And so, as long as Nginx is running in the background, as soon as it will receive some sort of transmission from the OBS or any other source, it will automatically just transfer it to the designated servers with their keys. And so, while well, people are trying to offer this sort of a service, but limiting you in order to earn cash from you, I just casually show you how to do it for free, without limitations. And all I just ask in return is just uh, maybe a shout out, maybe a quick look at my Patreon, if you want, so enjoy. Anyways, password in this one is not needed, you can write in whatever you want there, it just doesn't check for it. But if you want and have the know-how on the RTMP servers, which I don't, well, feel free to just put it in. Mm -hmm. But the thing here is that Nginx, uh, this RTMP server, is so lightweight, I think some people jokingly even say that you can run it on Raspberry Pi. And the benefits of the RTMP server doesn't end there, because all you need is just one OBS instance encoding, and then the server itself will just copy it and send it out. And that in of itself is already very simple and lightweight procedure, so theoretically, even with a rather mediocre PC, you should be able to stream on probably 10 different sites? Well, depending on your network speed, of course. Though, as I said, it's a copy of a stream, so you can't change the bitrate, frame rate, or resolution for each individual platform. For that, though, I would recommend using NDI. In the end, um, now that I think of it, the only benefit that Restream websites have is... Uh... Is there actually a single possible good and worthwhile benefit that they offer? Yeah, I don't think so. So, well, go and make your dream streaming setups. And remember, if someone ever asks you how you manage to stream on five different platforms or more at once with high quality, well, let them know of this video. Now then, I'll go and make a video on how to stream from two different PCs, as, well, you have less stress on the main gaming rig. But seriously, though, Engine X adds so little that you can barely feel it. Though, when it comes to NDI, well, then that's a bit different, and it can be quite useful. 
So, I suppose when the video comes out, check it out. But most of all, happy streaming, fellas.